Amen. Glory to God. Amen. We're going to worship the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Father God, thank you so much for this evening. Thank you for allowing us to ride safely. And we just want to praise and worship you this evening. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.
Song, praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. What's the message Amen. tonight? Amen. The, joy. the joy of the joy. So let's the joy of the well. The Lord and let's sing that song. Joy. Amen. Let's sing that song. You guys know it. Sing it with me. Amen.
Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Give me a second. God and Beatty. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's give the Lord praise. Amen. And the Bible says the two or three are gathered. He is in the midst. Amen. So it doesn't matter if there's a hundred people or one person. Amen. God is God is there. Amen. God is there. Amen. We're going to pray. Amen. We're going to pray. And uh, let the Holy Spirit have his way tonight. Glory to God. Uh, excuse me. There about the pit. Amen. Gracious Father, we just come before you tonight, Father God. We just give you praise and give you glory, Father God. And Father God, without you, Father God, uh, we are nothing, Lord God. We just pray, Father God, for those that are sick in body tonight, Father God, that you be with us, Father God. And, and Father God, we'll be lifting them up in prayer by name, Father God. And we just pray, Father God, that those that are leaving out of town this weekend, Father God, for God's mercy, Lord God. Father God, those that just, uh, maybe they just had a hard week this weekend, uh, Father God, they just wanted to get some rest, Father God. Glory to God, amen. We just pray for peace and give upon them in Jesus' name. And everybody says, amen. amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Greet somebody, amen. Welcome somebody, amen. Praise the Lord, amen. Uh, have a seat, amen. Glory to God, amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. amen. I know my wife's tuning in, amen. Uh, we got a praise report there, amen. Um, uh, her surgery went went good, amen. No amen. complications, amen. We give all God the glory, amen. Um, I had told her, I go, hey, um, um, you want me just to uh, send her a Bible study somewhere else or cancel it? So I can come and be with you today, you know, today. I was with her yesterday at the, at the hospital, of course, all day on Wednesday. And then, you know, I said, I'll just, you know, come right after work. And she goes, no, I'll just see you on Saturday. You know, you got to have Bible study. <clears throat> you got to have Bible study. So praise the Lord. So you know where my wife's heart's at. But uh, she was able to eat today. Amen. Amen. The praise report. Amen. She was able to eat today. Amen. Uh, she uh, she has some soup and some jello. Amen. And, uh. So she's doing good, amen. Hopefully, God willing, she'll be home tomorrow, amen. <clears throat> she'll be home tomorrow, and uh, so just looking forward to having her home, amen. I don't, I, I haven't slept on the bed since she's been gone. I've been on the couch, amen, amen. I can't, I can't be in there alone, amen. Praise the Lord. Okay, I'm gonna see some of that. Praise the Lord, amen. No, I just missed my wife. I just missed my wife. Uh, <clears throat> speaking about tomorrow, amen. Uh, we have a church after prayer tomorrow. We have a church cleanup day. Amen. Getting ready for conference. Amen. So if you're able, amen, if you're able to come and help us, amen, tomorrow, amen, we just pray, amen, that uh, you can come and help us. There's not, a, there's not a lot to do. There's no painting. There could be no painting or anything like that. Amen. It's just mainly just cleaning up, amen, cleaning up, you know, the chairs and and the, 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 the window shutters and and just making sure everything's tidied up for conference, amen. So uh, if you're able to join us tomorrow morning after prayer, amen, uh, and, and just help us for an hour, two hours, whatever you're able to do, come, come and join us tomorrow, amen. Come and join us tomorrow for our church cleanup day, amen. Especially if you're part of Praise Chapel Ball Park, Amen. And you're not and you're not working tomorrow, you're you know, or whatever the case may be, you should come and join us. Amen. Bottom line, that's your church. You should be there. Amen. Let me get some of this holy water, amen. You should be there. So that's between you and God, Amen. But if it's in your heart, come and join us, Amen. Also, amen, uh, <clears throat> on the 29th of August, we're going to have baptism. Amen. <clears throat> it's going to be there at the church. <clears throat> uh, the church purchased a, uh, a, baptism, a baptismal pool. Amen. And uh, so it's going to be there at the church on the 29th. We will be having, we will barbecue and, and, and everything like that afterwards. But 
it's very important, it's very important that if you're going to get baptized, <clears throat> that you make that last new foundation class on baptism. Because it's not, it's just not about just getting dunked in the water and coming back up, amen. There, there's a reason behind it, a scriptural reason behind it, why, you know, baptism, baptism is, is, is so important, mm -hmm. amen. It's a commandment, it's mm -hmm. a commandment that we get baptized, amen. But you need to know what you're doing, amen. You need to know what you're doing. So it's very important that you, you make that last class on the 29th uh, of August to learn and to know what's behind baptism and what's, uh, why you're getting baptized. And that night, you invite your family, you invite your friends, whoever, and you just come out, amen, and you get baptized, amen. If you're involved in a Bible study, amen, your Bible study leader will baptize you. If for some reason uh, you don't come to our church, but you want to get baptized, amen, then someone, you know, one of the leaders will, will baptize you, amen. But do your best to make that class, amen, on the 29th, amen. Uh, also, uh, also this, this has nothing to do with Praise Chapel in itself, but uh, we are... Operation Backpack is going to be uh, co-laboring this year. For those of you that don't know, uh, the last uh, five years, except for last year, 2020, because of the because of the epidemic, and this year, uh, we're not having it at our church. Amen. Um, but Operation Backpack, what we do is we hand out free backpacks, school supplies to the kids before they go back to school. Also haircuts and and uh, we give them a lunch and and so forth, amen. But it's all free. This year, Operation Backpack is co laboring with uh, C4 Cross Connection Community Church in the city of La Mirada, amen. And that's going to be on August 14th, from 10 to 2 p.m. So if you know anybody, if you know anybody in uh, Whittier, Norwalk, La Mirada. Uh, Brea area, um, let them know. Let them know that at C4 Cross Connection Community Church, mm -hmm. Operation Backpack is co-laboring with that with that uh, that church. Amen. In the, in this year's backpack event, I'm going to give you the address. So if you have uh, if you have a pen there, paper, pencil, whatever the case may be, write it down. Amen. It's one four. 273 Imperial Highway, La Mirada, California, 90638. Uh, it's right there, right off of Imperial and Valley View. Amen. So, if you know anybody, if you know anybody that has kids that's in need, amen, it's free, amen, pass, pass, pass on the word, amen, pass on the word, amen, uh, we're going to be out there co-laboring with them next sun, next Saturday, a week from tomorrow. We're going to do an outreach out there and uh, pass out flyers to uh, to the community there and uh, and let them know about the event. So that's August 14th from 10 to 2 p.m. Operation Backpack will be in La Mirada, California. Amen. From 10 to 2. Amen. We're going to have free haircuts. Of course, backpacks, school supplies. I picked up the school supplies today. I'm going tomorrow to pick up 200 backpacks. So, uh, so I'm going, I'm going to be out there tomorrow in Rancho Cucamonga to pick those up. Amen. Uh, there's going to be face painting for the kids. Uh, they're going to have a lunch for the kids. We're going to have entertainment. Amen. We're going to have entertainment. The, uh, the Latin Christian band Forgiven is going to be playing along with uh, Sister Josie, and I think uh, the Christian rapper SOG is going to be in the house, amen? He hasn't confirmed yet, but uh, we're, we're looking forward to that, amen? We're, so we're going to have uh, live entertainment, and um, uh, I know the pastor was thinking about getting a jumper for the kids, so I don't know if that's still going to happen, amen? But uh, come out, amen, come out, it's going to be a fun time. 
anybody that's joined us in the past here at Grace Chapel Ball of Park for the uh, backpack events that we've had here, they're awesome. I mean, it's just awesome. Amen. So I expect the same thing over there in Alvarado. Amen. If you, if you need the address, just uh, reach out to me. Amen. On Facebook or right there on Messenger. And, uh, and I'll, I'll shoot you the address. Amen. Huge. My wife, she's still in the hospital. Like I said, she should be home tomorrow. God willing. If not Sunday, you know, for sure. Uh, so she's she, she's my IT tech. She's the one behind the phone here. Uh, so if you're mess if you're messaging me right now, I can't see it. So I'll see it later. Amen. If you're sending a prayer request, I cannot see it right now. Uh, but we'll see it later. Amen. But we'll lift it. We'll lift up our prayers. Amen. Uh, besides that, Amen. There's nothing else going on. Amen. Except for tomorrow morning prayer. And then, of course, right after is the, is the church cleanup, amen. And then we're gonna Sunday we have uh, Sunday service, amen, uh, at 9:30. Don't forget those of you that are taking the new foundation class, 8:30, amen. You're almost done. You're almost done, amen. You're almost done. And if you've, if you've been making every one of them, man, thank you for your faithfulness, amen. Thank you for your faithfulness, amen. Uh, we gotta lift up uh, Brother Nico, Brother Nico and his mom Sarah. Amen. Um, they had to rush his grandfather, her dad, to the hospital tonight. Amen. His name is Roberto. First, I thought it was his grandmother, but it's his grandfather, Roberto. Amen. To the hospital. I don't know the details, but we need to pray for uh, Nico and his mom Sarah and uh, and his grandfather Roberto. Amen. Also, uh, brother uh, John is, is uh, uh, he, he left a vacation uh, for uh, for Laughlin. Amen. Pray for traveling mercies. Amen. And uh, of course, Raylene and Nadine. Amen. They're, they're feeling under the weather. Amen. So uh, we just gotta just lift them up. Right up. The enemy, the enemy, the enemy's relentless. Amen. You know, the enemy's relentless. He doesn't give up. Amen. And the closer you get to God. Amen. The more he's going to do his best to pull you away. Amen. And and just things, you know, things happen. Things happen. Amen. And uh, so you really have to just be prayed up. Have your armor on. You go. You don't take your just because you go to bed. You don't take your armor off. Amen. You don't take your armor off. You go to bed with your armor. Amen. Back in the days. Amen. Back in the days, the Roman soldiers. Amen. The soldiers. When they would go to bed, amen, they would always have their sword right next to them. And just in case the enemy would creep into their camp, they would have their sword right there, amen. And that's how we need to be. We need to go to bed with our sword right next to us, amen. So uh, we just going to lift them up to prayer, amen, at the end, amen. And then, uh, so we're just going to let, we're going to see what direction the Lord leads us tonight, amen. I'm going to get into the word, amen. It's, not going to be a long, a long one tonight, amen, uh, but it's going to be right to the point. Can someone say amen? Amen. 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 You got your Bibles tonight, amen, or whatever uh, ways, you know, I know a lot of people, you know, use their phones and iPads and all that, amen. So let's go to the book of Joshua, I mean, excuse me, Isaiah chapter 12. Isaiah chapter 12, and we're going to be through 1 and 6. Amen. Can anybody tell me tonight, that's here, amen, what's the theme of our conference? Amen. What was that again, sis? Redigging the wells of revival. Redigging the wells of revival. Amen. And we need to understand, first of all, revival. Amen. What is revival? What is revival? Revival spoke is broken up in two parts. First, we got the R-E, right? The R-E. The R-E, amen, it means repeat, amen? Repeat, to do it over again, to do it over again, amen? And the word Bible comes from the Latin word viva, amen? And what does viva mean? To live, amen? To live, amen? So... It means, revival means something that was dead, 
and you're going to bring back to what? To life. Amen? And that's revival. Amen? And that's revival. And, and that's why, you know, this year's theme, amen, be digging the wells of revival. Amen? And if you notice, all our le all our messages for the last couple of weeks have been have been focused on redigging the wells. Amen. We have redigging the wells of salvation and so on and so on. Amen. And tonight is the joy well. How many can use joy? I know I can. I can use joy. Amen. You know, the Bible says that the joy of the Lord is our what? Is our strength. Amen. And uh, so here in Isaiah chapter 12, verses 1 through 6, we read it. We read it before. Amen. And we're gonna read, 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 read it again. Read, repeat. Amen. The Bible says it uh, in verse one of chapter twelve of Isaiah. In that day, you will say, "I will praise you, O Lord, although you are angry with me. Your anger has turned away, and you have comforted me. Surely, God is my salvation." I will trust and not be afraid. The Lord, the Lord is my strength, my song. He has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. Amen. The same scripture that we, we talked about last week. Amen. Drawing the wells out of salvation. Amen. We talked about how important water is. Amen. How important wells are and how important our salvation is. Amen. So, with that said, amen, turn quickly to 1 John 5.13. 1 John 5.13. There's the amen. Bible tells us in this short portion of scripture, I write these things to you who believe. How many believe tonight? How many believe? I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. Let's pray. Father God, we come before you tonight, Father God, and we just give you all the honor, glory, and praise, Father God. For you are worthy, Lord God. You are worthy, Father God. Bless your word tonight. Open up our ears and open up our eyes, but most important, our hearts, Father God. So your word can penetrate deep into our hearts, Father God, removing any scales, Father God, from our eyes, Father God, and unclogging any deaf ears that we may have, Lord God. Jesus' name, and every say, amen. amen and amen. So Apostle John is writing to the church, amen. He's writing to a church of believers. But somewhere along the line, some of these believers, amen, are questioning their salvation. Have you ever questioned your salvation? Have you ever asked yourself, am I really saved? Am I truly saved? I've said the sinner's prayer. I've gone to the altar seven times, several times. The pastors, the pastors prayed over me. Amen. Uh, I've I've gone to revival services. I've gone to conferences. You know, uh, I fell on the floor. I fell I fell on the on the floor and did the fish. Amen. I mean, have you ever questioned your salvation? The Apostle Paul is writing to the church here, saying, "I write these things to you." He's writing to the church, to you, that you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know, he's telling the church, that you may know that you have eternal life, that you have self, that you are saved, that you know, that you know, that you know. Amen. In today's church, beloved, in today's church, People fall in five different categories. Amen? The first category is a safe person. These are those that know that they know that they know that they are saved. Amen? And they have eternal life. They're going to heaven. Amen? 
the second the second category is is the uncertain saved person. These are those who don't know that they are that they are saved or not. Amen. These are ones that. They'll go to the altar. Every time a pastor has an altar call, they'll go up there, amen, and still walk, turn around and walk back to their seat wondering, am I really safe? Amen? The third one, amen, is the backslider. Amen? These are those who tasted and saw that the Lord is good. However, they took God's grace in vain, and like a dog, they returned to their own vomit. Then there are those saved and unsaved people who think they are saved, who believe that they believe once saved, always saved, and this allows them to live the way they want without repentance. And then there are those saved, unsaved people who just don't, that just don't care. Amen? I'm concerned. Amen? They come to church for all the wrong reasons. Amen. That's the church today. That's the church then, and that's the church today. There's nothing new under the what? Sun. There's nothing new under the sun. We all fall into one of these five categories. And when I say all, I mean the church in whole. Amen. The church in whole. Not just our church, not just that church, not just that church but the church in all. Amen? It doesn't matter what church you go to, what's the name of the, on the building, what, what's the name on the, your t-shirt you wear, whatever ministry you're in. Amen? Everybody falls in one of these five categories. But in Scripture, in reality, there are only two categories. You are saved or you're not saved. Amen? Heaven or hell? One of the two. Amen? One of the two. Heaven or hell? Let's get one thing clear tonight, beloved. There is no such thing as purgatory. Nowhere in the Bible does it say anything about a place, amen, that a person goes after they die to work out their own sins. There is no in between. There's no in. There's no in between. Amen. That purgatory doctrine is a is a false doctrine from the pit of hell. Amen. The Bible speaks clearly. Heaven or hell? Are you saved or you're not saved? Every day a person lets the day go by, not knowing where they will spend eternity. They find themselves in a dangerous place. Whether you are saved or whether you are not saved, there will be evidence. Amen? There will be evidence. Can anybody tell me what the word evidence means? The word, the, the, the word means the available body of facts or information indicating whether a belief or proposition is true or valid. Evidence is anything that you see, experience, read, or are told that causes you to believe that something is true or has really happened. Amen? Take, for instance, the police. When a, when a crime happens, amen, when a crime happens, and they go with you know, the police, the detectives, what's the first thing they collect? evidence. Amen? They collect evidence, whether it's shotgun shells or, or bullets or anything from the crime scene. Amen? That they consider evidence. Amen? They collect it, right? Because they need it. Amen? For information. Amen? And the same thing goes with our walk with God. Amen? If you are truly saved, and you believe that you're saved, there should be evidence in your walk with God. Can someone say amen? No. The Bible tells us in Matthew 15 through 20, amen, you shall know them by their fruit, right? You shall know them by their fruit. Coming to church 
or joining a church don't save you. Can someone say amen? amen. Being baptized don't save you either. Amen. You could go to McDonald's, amen, and, and eat a Big Mac, but that doesn't mean that you're you're a Big Mac. Amen. If you eat plenty of them, you might look like a Big Mac, but you're really not a Big Mac. Amen. Even believing in Jesus don't save you either. There are a lot of people who believe in God and they're on their way to hell. You know anybody like that? Don't say, don't say amen too loud. Amen. Don't say amen too loud. Amen. The Bible even tells us, amen, in James 2.19, that the, that the demons even believe and tremble at the name of Jesus. It's a good thing to believe, beloved, but look at the evidence. Look at the evidence of those that say, I believe in God. Oh, I believe in God. I, 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 I go to church. I, you know, whatever. Amen. Look at their fruit. Look at their fruit. Is their fruit good? Is their fruit bad? Or is their fruit ugly? The good, the bad, the what? And the ugly. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Look what it says in, in the book of John 5, a book of 1 John 5, 11 through 12. Look what it says. And this is a true testimony. God has given us eternal life, and this life is in the Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. Heaven or what? Hell. Amen. Continuing in our main text of 1 John 5, 13. Amen. He tells us, I write these things to you who believe. Who believe. He's, 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 he's writing to us in this room tonight. Those of us that believe in the name, in the name of the Son of God. So that you may know that you have eternal life. Each one of us in this room knows our knows our walk. Each one of us in this room knows our heart. Amen. Each one of us in this room knows who we believe. Amen. And each one of us in this room know, amen, if you're saved or you're not. Amen. The Apostle Paul is writing to the church to a body of believers that the evidence that has been seen and of the good fruit they have produced proves that they have eternal life and they are going to heaven. Amen? Tonight, beloved, I, I want to share with you tonight, amen, if you have these four areas in your life, you have the assurance and the evidence you are saved. Amen? The first thing, the first thing in your walk with God, amen, and if you have this, amen, there is an inner spiritual witness inside of you. Amen? First John 3.24 says, We know Jesus lives inside of us by the Holy Spirit who dwells inside of us. Amen? The Bible tells us that Jesus said that he will, he told his disciples, I'm going to leave. I'm going to go to my father, but he will send you a teacher. That, 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 that's the Holy Spirit who will dwell inside of you. Amen. Now, what is the reason the Holy Spirit, what's the purpose of the Holy Spirit dwelling inside of us? Can anybody tell me? What is, the, what is the main reason why the Holy Spirit lives inside of us? The Holy Spirit lives inside of us to bring conviction. To bring conviction. It's not to speak in tongues. It's not to prophesy. It's not to walk on water. It's not to do none of that. Amen. That's all good. And that's all part of the fivefold ministry. Amen. But, amen. The Holy Spirit dwells inside of us, amen, to bring conviction, amen, to bring conviction, amen. You know, 
Well, if you're looking at something you shouldn't be looking at, and that Holy Spirit is, is, is convicting you, amen, you should turn away and not look at it no more, amen? But if you, if, 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 if the Holy Spirit is tugging at your heart, but yet you're still looking at what you shouldn't be looking at, you need to check yourself. You really need to check yourself, amen? And the Bible says, amen, they shall know you by your fruit, amen? If you say you're saved, but there's no conviction in anything you're doing, amen, then you really need to check yourself. The second area, amen, the second area, amen, is a, a willingness to receive His Word, the Word of God. 1 John 4, 6 tells us, if you love His Word, you cannot get enough of His Word. The Spirit that lives inside of you draws you to His Word. Amen. The Bible says that my sheep know my voice and they follow me in John 10, 27. You want to follow Jesus? You want to hear His voice? Then read His Word. Then read His Word. Amen. If you're, if you're in love with Jesus and you're saved, you're in love with Jesus, this, this, this book, amen, the Bible, should be the first thing you read in the morning and the last thing you read at night. Amen? No in-between. No in-between. Amen? The Bible, like I said, my sheep know my voice and they follow me. The only way you're going to hear Jesus' voice if you're in His Word. Amen? The third thing is obeying His Word. Amen? Verse number two and number three go hand in hand. To receive it, to receive His Word, and to obey His Word. Amen? James in 122 tells us, but don't just listen, but let's go there. Let's go, let's go, let's go to John. Let's go to James 122. Let's go to James 122. Look what it says. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourself. Do what it says. Amen? Anyone who listens to the word but not, does not do what it says is like a man who looks at his face in the mirror. And after looking at himself, goes away and immediately forgets what he looked like. Amen? So it's not about just reading his word, amen, or listening to his word, amen, but to do what it says, to obey his word, amen? When you receive his word and obey his word, there will be growth you no longer, you're no longer drinking milk like a baby, but you are eating meat, amen, like a grown man or woman, amen. I love what it says here. Do not merely, merely listen to the word and, and so deceive yourself. Do what it says. You want to get closer to God? Do what his word says. The fourth and the most important one, amen, to know that you're safe, amen, is that you have love for other Christians. 1 John 3, 14, 19, amen, tells us, amen, 1 John 3, what can we say? 1 John 3, 14 through 19. It tells us this. We know that we have passed from death to life. In other words, you know that you are no longer you're dead. You're no longer dead. You are no longer that person of pride. You are no longer that person that hates. You are no longer that person of unforgiveness. Amen? You know that you've passed from death to life because we love our brothers and sisters. Anyone who does not love remains in death. Anyone who hates his brother 
is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. If anyone has material possessions and sees his brother in need, but has no pity on him, how can the love of God be in him? Dear children, let us not love with words or tongue, but with actions and in truth. This then is how we know that we belong to the truth and how we set our hearts at rest in His presence. Amen. That person that talks about you, that person that slanders your name, that person that spreads rumors about you, that person that says, oh, I love you, brother and sister, but yet when they're hugging you, they're stabbing you in the back. Amen. If you love them, despite what they, what, what they do to you, amen, then you know you have the love of the Father in your heart. Amen. You know that you know that you know. Amen. God abides in us. He abides in us by the Holy Spirit, which the Holy Spirit brings. Amen. Brings love into our heart. Amen. And if you fall into all of these points, and the assurance and the evidence is there, amen, you can shout with joy of salvation according to what we read. Amen. The joy of the well. Amen. The joy of the well that you that you dwell that love out of. Amen. That you draw that, that, that forgiveness out of. Amen. Some of us have to go deep into that well to forgive somebody. Amen. Is that, that's a good place to say amen. amen. You know, there's the, there's there's a lot of us, there's a lot of us, amen, that there's just that one person, amen, that you really, really, really got to go deep into that well of salvation to bring out forgiveness for them. Amen. The Bible tells us, amen, you know, that he loved us. Before we even loved him, he loved us what? First. That there's no greater love than one to lay down their life for their brother. Amen. And that's the life that we live. Amen. So when we, so when we draw from that well of salvation, when we draw from that well of joy, amen, we must know that we know that we know, amen, that we have eternal life, amen. And the assurance and the evidence is in our walk. And so we say amen. amen. Let's give the Lord praise. Amen. <laughs> amen. 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 I told you I won't be long tonight. Amen. This was just like right to the point. Amen. If, you're take, if you took notes, read those scriptures later on. Amen. Read those scriptures later on. And, 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 and amen. I mean, they'll, they'll really, they'll, they will really minister to your heart. Amen. So we're going to lift up uh, those needs in prayer. Amen. And then uh, we're going to take up the offering tonight. Amen. Uh, Scott, uh, after we pray, uh, lift up the offering, please. Amen. And then uh, we'll just close out. Amen. We'll just close out and uh, pray for traveling mercies also. Amen. Amen. So we're going to, we're going to, we're going to lift up. Uh, Nico's grandfather and, and his uh, mom's dad, amen, and uh, Roberto. Uh, lift up my wife, Jackie, amen, uh, that, that everything goes good and she can come home tomorrow, amen. I know she just wants to come home, amen. I know she wants to come home, amen. You know, the hospitals are good, amen, but there ain't nothing like home, and so say amen. amen. Nothing like home, amen. I want my wife home also, amen. Uh, you know, it's just not the same, you know. Someone yelling at me. Amen. I can't yell at myself. Amen. <laughs> I just play. I just play Jackie. Amen. But uh, praise the Lord. Amen. Also, uh, uh, continue praying for our upcoming conference. Amen. Our conference that we got coming up in two weeks. Two okay. weeks is our conference. Two weeks is our conference. Amen. And just pray that you can make it every night. Uh, I'm gonna take that Friday off. Amen. I'm gonna take that Friday off. Amen. Uh, 
uh, and uh, so I could be there at the morning, at the morning uh, service also, amen. Uh, I don't want to miss it. I mean, there's just something about, just something about this year that something's going to break through, amen. Something's going to break through, I mean, drawing from the wells of revival, I mean, you know, something's, something's going to give. Something's going to get. And if you're dealing with something, and you need to, you need deliverance from something. Amen. You need to make it. You need to make it. Amen. You might not get it the first night, so you come the second night. You might not get it that night, but you, you know, you come with an open heart, and you'll get it that third night. You don't know. You don't know which night you're going to get it. That's why you need to be there. Gracious Father, we come before you tonight, Father God, as we just give you praise, we give you glory, Father God. And we just lift up Nico's grandfather right now, Father God, Roberto. We pray for healing, Father God. Uh, you know the need, Father God. You know what he's dealing with, Father God. And we just pray right now, Father God, that you're with him, Lord God. And uh, with, with Sister Sarah, Father God, also, Father God. And, and the family there, Father God. We just pray for them, Lord. God, we, we pray, Lord God. Use Nico, use Nico, Father God, as a testimony, uh, Father God. Give him the boldness to speak your word to the family there, Lord God. We pray, Father God, for uh, those that are out of town right now, Father God, for traveling mercies, Lord God. We just pray, Father God, that you be with them, Father God, so they can return safely, Lord God. We pray for those, Father God, that are having marital problems right now, Father God. We just pray for peace in the home, Lord God. We pray for children also, Lord God. We lift up, Father God, uh, all those, Father God, that are sick in body also, Father God. I lift up my wife right now, Father God, who's, who's at the hospital, over there in the hospital, Lord God. Uh, she was able to eat today, Father God. In fact, she ate twice today, some, some soup and some jello. But, you know, uh, praise the Lord, Lord God. I mean, so far, you know, everything's good, Father God. Everything's good. I just pray that she comes home, Father God, quickly, Father God. And we lift up, Father God, uh, just everybody in this room tonight, their needs, Father God. Uh, we pray for their children. We pray for their home, their finances, Lord God. Uh, we lift them up to you. I thank you for Scott and Beatty for blessing us with worship tonight. Amen. Bless them, Lord God. And, and we just pray also, Father God, that you be with us tonight, Lord God. Give us peace tonight. Let Father God will lay our head on our pillows, Father God. Just be, it should be a, a cloud, Lord God, a cloud, Father God, of, of this, what you have in store for us, Lord God. And Father God, just let us know that we know that we know, Father God, that we can always come, Father God, and draw water from the well of salvation, Lord God. And Father God, I just lift everything up to you. Those that are watching right now, Whatever their prayer requests are, whatever the need is, I, I place it in your hand, Father God. And, and I just pray, Father God, that your hand be upon them, Lord God. Touch them, Lord God. If there's any unsafe person watching right now, touch them, Lord God. Touch them, Lord God. If there's any backslider watching, touch them, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. If there's anybody that's sick in body watching, touch them and heal them in the name of Jesus, Father God. If there's anybody looking for a miracle, Father God, bring miracle to their life, but let it be in your glory, Father God. Let your will be done, Father God. So tonight, Father God, I'm going to turn it over to Scott so you can pray for the offering. And we're just going to close out, Father God, just give you praise and give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Father God, tonight we lift this offering up to you, Father God. Thank you, Father God, for allowing us, Father God. Uh, the opportunity we have, Father God, to bless your kingdom, to bless your church, Father God. Lord, we ask that all those who are able to give and who are unable to give, Father God, tonight, Lord, that you bless them equally, Father God, Lord. And Lord, their hearts, Father God, with what counts, Father God, Lord. So I pray, Father God, that we all give with a cheerful heart, Father God, tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Don't forget, tomorrow morning, prayer at 8 a.m. Following, following that, we have a uh, uh, church cleanup. Amen. If you can't make it to prayer at 8, come at 9 o'clock for uh, church prayer. I'm pretty sure pastors are going to have some refreshments and all that. So don't worry. Uh, just come on out, amen, and help us for, for, for an hour or two, amen, whatever the case may be. And if uh, not, come Sunday at 9.30 for uh, church service, amen. And don't forget, uh, if you're going to get baptized on August 29th, amen, you must attend that class. So you have plenty of time. I'm giving you a month notice. A month notice, 
uh, to make arrangements, get a babysitter, get the day off, whatever the case may be. Amen. So you can make that class, so you can get baptized. Amen. And that's why you know that you know that you know. Amen. That you know that what that you know what you're doing. Amen. And don't forget about the backpack event in La Mirada on August 20 on August 14th. If you need more information, just reach out to me. God bless you. Good night. And we'll see you tomorrow. If not, we'll see you in church. God bless you.